Good morning. I'm Megan Terry, Community Gardens Manager here with Sherry Cruz, Urban Harvest Garden Educator. Hi, Sherry. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. Good. We are here in the Urban Harvest Teaching Garden, which is blooming. And can you tell us a little about what we're going to talk about today? Well, today we're going to spend our time talking about um, ecological pest management. Okay, great. Um, which is kind of a big long sentence uh, but really it just means employing certain cultural strategies to mitigate uh, pest pressures that we experience in our gardens. Great and um, are we going to be able to take a look at some examples in this garden you think? Absolutely. Okay great. Absolutely. Uh, wonderful. So one of the um, questions we asked and I see it's behind you was about the squash vine borer. Uh, very problematic, especially here in the south, okay. um, and uh, it is um, a moth. The adult uh, will fly, and right. the female will lay the eggs at the, the base of um, our squash plants right. um, and deposit eggs. Right. The caterpillar hatches, bores into, say, the crown of the, the squash plant, and begins to eat its way. Uh, through the vascular system okay. uh, so that of course impedes the uh, plant's ability to take up nutrients and water right and it starts to wither and die right do we have an example of that or is this plant still pretty healthy um, it's looking pretty good um, mm -hmm. it's coming so we out. have uh, here a large zucchini looking about as good as a squash can be expected to look here mm. in Houston garden uh, they do suffer a lot with fungal diseases with our high um, humidity rate right, in okay. Houston so this one's actually looking pretty good okay. and I don't see any evidence of squash vine borer okay that's that's great. And I know people have also asked questions um, about cucumbers because cucumbers are growing plentiful right now um, with uh, powdery mildew. And that was a question I realized I didn't send you, but can you talk a little bit about powdery mildew? Sure. Well, powdery mildew in and of itself is not technically going to compromise the plant okay. unless there is quite a bit of it right. and that could impede the plant's ability to photosynthesize. Got it. Uh, covering the leaves and they're, they're not able to um, go through that process. Right. Uh, but however, it is sometimes a symptom that you do have a pest issue, uh -huh. maybe aphids, some kind of sucking uh, uh, insect that's secreting honeydew. Right. Got it. And the mold grows on the honey. Right. So would you say if a plant, similar to our bodies, if it's, our bodies are stressed out and our immune system's compromised, a plant is more susceptible to disease or pests? Absolutely. And okay. that's a great question because that ties right into um, the um, pest management, ecological pest management. Okay. Uh, one of your strategies would right. be to keep your plants as healthy as possible. Right. That's going to uh, mean proper watering, not overwatering or underwatering. Right. Basically, you're going to want to really, really soak that soil. Right. Stick your finger in. Yep. You want to see a good couple of inches of right. moisture. Right. Um, so um, that way your plant is hydrated uh, and it's best to water in the morning. Right. You lose less water to evaporation. Right. Um, and you want that plant fully uh, engorged with that water for its day. Okay. Great. And um, what are some other strategies for ecological pest management? Or if someone who's just starting or just having a backyard garden, what should they think about? Well, it's it's a really it's a big picture, and it takes some planning. Right. Uh, it might take some layering over um, a couple of seasons, mm. uh, but you will also want to uh, attract all the beneficial uh, insects mm -hmm. to the garden. So that's a matter of supplying mm -hmm. not only. Um, shelter, right. so habitats for the young, right. uh, uh, places for them to rear their young, yeah. uh, supplying food sources. Right. So for the adults, that could be um, a matter of pollen generating uh, plants right. with the flowers. Right. Uh, for our predators, that's going to be a matter of um, growing plants um, that they love to visit because they know, say for instance, um, the dill mm -hmm. uh, down here yeah, is um, flowering. It's a good idea, even though dill is, we, it is a cool weather annual. Mm -hmm. um, it's getting pretty late, although this one is still looking quite healthy. Right. Uh, it's oh, getting pretty late to have this in the garden, right. uh, but allowing the blooms to stay. when you, If you have the room to go ahead and leave it in, right. all these tiny little clusters of flowers 
are going to attract lots of tiny little insects. And you can see some yeah. wasps flying around here. Right. They know this is prime hunting grounds. Right. This is a great place for them to come and feed and right. find a lots of little insects. Yes. So growing uh, the flowers, mm. different heights um, right. and diversity, you're right. going to attract lots of the great predators uh, and beneficial insects to your garden right. and pollinators. Yes. So I can see, can you describe like example, what's in this bed here with the tall is it sunflower? This is a big uh, sunflower um, and it's uh, probably the, one of our little natives here. Mm -hmm. um, we've got these nice big ray flowers right. and right here, um, this is a composite flower. So actually all the little flowers are all these hundreds and hundreds of little guys in here are all actually your, your little true flowers. Right. And so that's providing a great source of pollen and nectar. So you're gonna attract lots of bees, uh, butterflies, and um, we also have some marigolds. Right. Uh, marigolds um, are a great companion flower. They do repel uh, some insects. Right. So um, they're good to have in, as a companion plant. Right. And then uh, this is a large uh, basil here. Yeah. Uh, it's in, in, in blossom. Um, and these flower spikes are great attractors to the pollinators as well. Right. So, um, you know, well, all the good. different types and shapes of flowers address the different needs of the different insects because they're all going to have different right. mouth parts. Right. Um, some have the long snouts to easily reach inside these small little flowers. Right. And then you also will think about hummingbirds and the tubular flowers yeah. that you'll see on some salvias. So we have uh, quite a few salvias over here in the pollinator garden. Yeah. Can we take a walk over there? Sure. And so there's hundreds of kinds of salvias. There is upwards that scientists are telling us they believe there's upwards of about 950 in wow. the genus. Right. Uh, and there's probably more. Right. They do cross pollinate pretty right. easily. So you see a lot of different varieties. And of course, there's a lot of breeding with them as well because they're right. such a great plant to have in anyone's garden. Right, great. And so if someone wanted to plant a pollinator garden here in Houston and they wanted to start today, would that be possible? Um, it's possible, but you would have to really be on top of the watering. Okay. It's a super stressful time to plant. Yeah. Um, I would suggest uh, buying at least gallon sized plants. Yeah. That way they have a bigger root ball so they have more access uh, to the water. Right. And you're going to want to mulch yeah. well when you put that in yeah. and uh, really stay on top of that water. They actually need extra water when they're trying to establish. Got it, yeah. What's the best time of year to be planting a lot of our native plants then? Uh, we like to look uh, to October and November, okay. uh, certainly well before we might anticipate any freeze. Of course, in Houston, we, we never really know, but really yes. a lot of gardening um, is experimenting, and that's actually a lot of fun as well. Yes. But So that's a really good time. So before it freezes, yes. when it's not quite so hot, so that plant is not as stressed and has time to settle in and, and yes. establish. Great. Okay. And I wanted to go back and ask about some of our pests. So one of the number one questions we get in gardens here and lawns is fire ants. What do you have to say about fire ants? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I certainly see them as a great nemesis. Uh -huh. uh, they are everywhere. I don't believe we'll ever be able to totally rid ourselves of them. Yes. Um, they believe they came over somewhere in the 1930s. Right. Um, probably they came from South America right. and they probably they were using soil or uh, as ballast and ships, so yeah. we believe that's how they got here. Right. Um, and they certainly naturalized. Yes. Um, and um, they'll talk about the Texas two-step method, yeah. so that you'd want to put out not only some bait, a broadcast uh, broadly throughout your lawn, right. uh, and then also come back and treat individual mounds. Okay. Um, I don't necessarily, being, being organic, yes. uh, want to buy into the, the broadcasting because yeah. I don't want to harm any other of my beneficials right. or maybe some native ants. Right. Um, but I do, I will treat some of the individual mounds. Okay. Um, and we do use a lot of orange oil, especially in our schools, yeah. uh, in our school gardens. Right. Um, it's um, 
simply just pressed uh, orange peels right. and they've got all that, that orange oil extracted. It, right. it comes in a concentrate. Right. And then you uh, just apply that to the top of the mounds. Yes. And it doesn't always just kill them outright, right. uh, but it, as you, we think of oranges being so acidic and yeah. you can think about that mixture just pouring on that ant mounds, right. you're basically making them very, very uncomfortable and yes. they'll move along. Right. But it typically means that they might relocate, but at least they might relocate out of the garden. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Correct. And, and away from where you're, you're working each and every day. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another pest question that we got, and I don't know if we actually have signs of rodents here, but is dealing with rodents. They eat um, a lot of our plants. I know some of our gardeners have gotten all of their eggplant eaten by something like possum, perhaps, or rats. They do. Uh, any tricks or trades uh, for dealing with rodents? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you can always you put out the sticky traps, uh, right. put out the live traps. I mean, I've had problems. Right. I live in Northeast Houston up by Lake Houston, okay. and I have possums, I have raccoons, and I, yeah. I welcome them to my yard. I'm not always so happy when they yeah. do get my tomatoes or dig up my new, yeah. my new seedlings yes. and so forth. Um, so it's it's really grow enough some to share yes. some for yourself and some for God. Right. Um, yes. But um, I I have to tell you I have two cats. They right. are indoor outdoor cats. Yes. That really really helps. In fact, okay. this morning as I was leaving, yeah, my little girl cat had a mouse. Okay. So uh, I, I really, yeah. um, it's it's just what what you're comfortable yes. doing. Are you comfortable yeah. trapping them right. and, and throwing them out? Um, yeah. It's it's grow some sacrificial plants right. maybe a little further away that are intended from your for them, from right. your garden. Yes. So I, there's just that's a hard one. Yes. <laughs> yes. Got it. Okay. And then, um, do you think we can go in the garden and look for any of our beneficial ore pests that we might see? Sure, okay. um, we That's certainly can. Um, it's getting a little, the sun's coming yes. out. <laughs> it's getting a little bit warmer. Right. So a lot of the guys are hiding. They're yes. going down uh, to the base of the plants, right. maybe hiding in the mulch. Right. Um, but uh, we've certainly seen some wasps yes. out. Um, I love seeing the wasps. We have parasitic wasps, uh, right. the paranoids uh, that they, um, peritonoids that yes. um, will- they might be paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they actually will uh, lay their eggs right. on some of the caterpillars. Oh, and when right. the little babies hatch, yes. they eat uh, yes. the caterpillars. <laughs> so we do, as gruesome as that is, yes. we, we do welcome that, uh, right. especially- um, when we see uh, a tomato hornworm yeah. with the little eggs all over the top of it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, some are pure, um, purely um, predators. Right. And they actually will um, just catch and eat. Right. Um, some of, so again, here's a, a wasp here. Yeah, right. uh, it's, it's, it's visiting these flowers. Uh, some are actually um, pollinators right. as well. They're not as effective as bees though. No, they don't, they don't, they're not, uh, they don't have the sacks and yes. the extra pouches to, right. to carry all that, that yes. pollen. There's thousands and thousands of pollinators. Yes. They're just not as effective as certainly honeybees, yes. uh, but then our native bees are also right. great pollinators. Right. And that's another thing that you can do yeah. um, in your habitat yeah. is to build the shelter. And, and uh, I personally right. in my yard, I have a lot of little structures and little insect houses. Right. So I have all types of native bees. I do a lot of trellising cool. with bamboo. Right. And uh, so our little mason bees right. uh, love to, to drill in. Um, the carpenter bees ah, will drill in and make yeah. their little habitats right, it, right in my garden yeah. <laughs> so that I have those yes. guys right there working for right. me. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Free ecosystem service, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. And then um, one of the pests I think we saw in the tomato, I don't know if it's going to be there, but it was the stink bug. Is that right? Yes. It was the southern stink bug, okay. uh, a true uh, shield bug. Um, they have a sucking mouth part. Right. Um, they really will damage a tomato crop quite rapidly. Right. Um, if you have a high population of them, um, they um, pierce the tomato, right. um, they're sucking out juices, right. um, and then the tomato will never really quite, oh, here we go right here. <laughs> here we go, right here. Now, you could grab him, <laughs> and I don't like, <laughs> sorry, uh, okay. sorry for death, yeah, but um, I don't really like to 
to squish things. Yeah. Certainly, if you have gloves on, just go ahead and squish it. Yeah. I like to carry um, a bucket yeah. of water. I do put a little orange oil in them because okay. I found, especially with the larger leaf-footed bugs, which right. also have the sucking mouth part, right. uh, love to attack the tomatoes. Yes. Uh, they're, they're, they can they can fly, right. and um, they can get out of that water pretty easily. Yes. So I find if I coat this surface with a little orange oil, it, it does take them oh, down pretty quickly. Okay. Otherwise, you you have to stir them and yes. wait till they totally drown. Um, yes. But yes. Um, that's my my preferred method, right. and really. The most important thing is to monitor. I go yeah. out every day right. and I monitor my plants. Yes. I know what their eggs look like. They're right. actually lovely eggs. They're barrel shaped. Yeah. Uh, they'll be on the underside of a leaf. Right. Um, I inspect for eggs. That's certainly the easiest way yeah. to take care of your problem. Right. Pinch off those leaves, throw them away. Yeah. Also, if you see all their little babies, now the leaf-footed um, guy um, yeah. has little orange nymphs. They're right. orange uh, with little black legs. Yep. They will be all clustered together, 50, 60, 70, yeah. 90 of them. Right. Um, and it's easy to take that bucket of water right. and hit Just that branch them. and drop them all in there. Yes. So again, um, stopping the problem before it gets way out of hand. Yes. Because once they're in their adult form and they fly, they're right. much harder to take care of, but Got that's it. just a mechanical means. Yes. But um, I suggest, you know, going online, uh, Texas A&M uh, Department of Entomology has some great resources great. so that you can learn what the eggs look like. Right. You can learn what the nymphs look like and yes. what the adults look like. And so you can be watchful for them. Right, great. Yeah. Cool. Anything else that you want to add, Sherry, about things that you do at home or things that you would recommend for a first time gardener for using ecological pest management? Just, again, I, I say it's a layering method, yeah. but start putting in your plants, put yeah. in a wide diversity. Yes. Think about your the surrounding area. Great. Perhaps you have a place where you can build a little wildscape. You yes. can put in some shrubs so you can add. Birds are fantastic right. um, uh, at eating insects. Yes. Uh, some of them, their diet is exclusively right. um, insects. Right, right. Some are also fruit eaters, yes. but the little Carolina wren, I had one nesting, and it's an insect eater, yeah. had one nesting right in one of my tomato plants. Oh, neat. So there I had a predator yes. eating insects, so right. that was fa fantastic. Yes. Um, so you, you wanna think about supplying that, that habitat and right. the food source. And also, a water source is very important. Yes. So that could be just, um, a bird bath. Right. Um, right. That could be a yeah. small shallow dish that maybe has pebbles in the bottom that right. you keep the, the water in. Yes. Uh, maybe you have the drip irrigation system that right. comes on each day. Yes. So that's another source for water. Yes. But just supplying the simple needs, uh, <laughs> you're going to start bringing these uh, natural biological uh, predators yes. to right. your garden. Neat. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining me. Oh, I'm just going to cool. pan out one more time of our beautiful garden here. And these are great examples of that layering you were talking about yes, here, right? Yes, absolutely. We've got, you know, some cucumbers on a trellis. We've yeah. got diversity in height. We've got diversity in blossom structure right. um, and just all different. We've got you know the corn here it's just with the tassels up high right oh it's just a lot of diversity yes. a lot of places for um life as it should be yes. to take place yes great well thanks so much sherry see you next time thank bye. you bye, -bye.